Hi there, I'm Greg Kikefe from Gravity Brewing out in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, we're thrilled to be out at uh, Brussels this weekend with the uh, BXL Beer Fest. Uh, we're a tiny little brewery in a converted cellar slash bunker out in uh, Budapest, uh, just in the 9th district center of town. We spent about two years building the place out, a uh, total hole in the ground when we first started. It was, uh, it was kind of a wreck and it's been a lot of digging things out, just uh, setting up systems, getting everything running, but we're now, uh, we've been up for about a year in the, in the taproom and brewery down there. And it's been fantastic. The reception from the public has been great. We, uh, we have a small little, uh, we have a, a five barrel, 600 liter uh, rig as our production capacity. Um, about 6,000 liters of monthly capacity on that. And we also are very fond of our little uh, SS Brutech one barrel system. It allows us to prototype everything at uh, a very small batch size. Uh, allows us to make mistakes, basically, and learn from them. And also get a, uh, uh, get a read on our regulars and what they like, you know, what uh, what kind of styles they want to see more of, what kind of things, uh, directions they want to push these beers. Uh, so it's great to have. We run a lot of one barrel prototypes, get three kegs out to the tap room and uh, just run them as exclusives in our in our little home there. Um, yeah, we uh, haven't really been on the international scene until now. We've just been starting this year to, to push out into uh, Slovakia a little bit and now into to Brussels and Benelux and the like and trying to make a few connections there. But uh, we, tend to, we tend to run some traditional styles often with a slight twist, uh, a little bit of English and American traditionals. We, uh, one of the beers we have this weekend is uh, a triple Scotch Ale is our styling on it, but it's a wee heavy base uh, that uh, we've really enjoyed just sort of resurrecting, getting, getting a little more of the Scotch Ale. Uh, out there as a, as a style in Budapest, you know, most of these old English styles are not known, or old uh, British styles are not known very well. So things like that, uh, we've got some Imperial Stouts up this weekend as well, some Porter, uh, a lot of things that we uh, think are important to bring to the Budapest craft beer scene. There's a sea of hazy IPAs, some of which are delicious, and you know, pastry sours and all this stuff. And so it's nice to be able to, to broaden the selection a little bit out there, uh, get some some styles people ne haven't necessarily heard about or haven't necessarily tried many of and uh, kind of introduce them to the scene. What's your background and how did you come to start it? Is it yourself uh, and a few other people? Yeah, kind of it started that way. It's, uh, it's grown a little bit right now, but we basically I started just home brewing uh, in Budapest about eight years ago or so because there, I couldn't find enough good dark beer, essentially. <laughs> it was, uh, we were seeing a bit of the IPA scene and a, and a couple sours sort of hit the market back then, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty new scene out there. So I just started, you know, trying to do a bit of brewing in a, in a little eight liter bucket and then 12 liters, 20 liters, you know, on and on and on, you get more kit and more advanced in, the, in your techniques and processes and all this, and eventually you have to start selling the stuff. Uh, so that kind of you know spirals out of control as it always does and uh, we ended up at a small little pilot brewery we just rented some space uh, for a one barrel operation for for a couple of years closed that down in 2019 uh, to start work on the new build and uh, yeah two years building through covid obviously and then uh, and then we were able to open the the new brewery and tap room in uh, june last year are they craft uh, beer bars that uh, so uh, there are yeah. way to distribute your beer within there are a lot of bars drink? yeah there's there's a huge craft beer scene now that's starting up it's um we have a pretty tight knit sort of crowd of bars that we like partner bars that we uh, that we ship our beers to you know we our aim is not necessarily volume uh, in most of these cases we really want to we really want to be to have time to give ourselves time to develop these styles to make sure that we're introducing them in the right way uh, and to make sure that you know the beers are good, make sure everything's solid. It's uh, uh, so it's nice to have a, a small crew to begin with. Of we have, I think we have four bars at the moment that we're shipping to in Budapest, uh, plus our tap room, of course. And that kind of tight knit community really gives us a, a very quick, very reliable feedback loop on these beers uh, because a lot of this is new to us as well. You know, this is uh, we're a, a very fresh new brewery. We, um, you know, we many of these styles we've tried a million times, but all right, let's let's try making this thing or that thing and. Uh, yeah, take some experimentation, uh, and it takes it takes a group of drinkers, basically um, drinkers and, and barmen and, and all the rest, to uh, to just see uh, what works and what doesn't, uh, what people want to see. Uh, tell me, how is the uh, uh, first the the harkening back to tradition, consumer taste? How has that changed 
in Hungary. It has a brewing tradition, I know, but is that the kind of tradition you're looking at? Or I know it's a wine country. Right, yeah. So Hungary, uh, the brewing tradition, there is there is a lot of history there. Uh, unfortunately, it's basically macro lager at this point, uh, as far as the traditional stuff goes. The um, the brewing scene is is pretty new as far as styles apart from that. Uh, you know, five, maybe 10 years at most. and. Uh, it's it, it can be a challenge, you know, uh, educating the the customer base, you know, trying to, to get people interested in styles they've never heard of before. And obviously, we do a fair number of uh, traditionally international styles, UK styles, US stuff that, you know, you, you get people coming in who are sort of like, oh, what what is this? You know, what's going on with this beer? And uh, you know, it helps to have uh, great staff in the tap room to to really communicate that stuff uh, over to the guests. But weirdly, you know, the the macro projects have all started doing. Uh, craft oriented uh, production these days as well so we see dry oh, hopped <laughs> right exactly yeah we see we see dry hop stuff from uh, from macro we see sours we see stuff like this and to a certain degree you know as a small brewery it it actually kind of helps us because it introduces these things in a way that you know people will see things in the supermarkets uh, and try them and then when they come in to a brewery that's you know that's doing these things on a small scale they are already familiar a bit with the style and they say oh you know compare these things to the to the macro versions and thankfully usually we come off well in that yeah. where do you go from here with the brewery what's your plans what's your dream we uh you know we're built in a converted bunker an old air raid shelter in the center of town which means we have absolutely no space for expansion um and that's fine by us we actually we don't really want to expand on the beer side uh, we're very happy we're a small little team and 6,000 liters monthly production is plenty for us. We don't need to make more beer. Uh, and we really enjoy experimenting with styles, bringing stuff, uh, you know, bringing new stuff into the tap room and into our few partner bars. Uh, right now, this year, our big push has been trying to reach out internationally a bit uh, because of our focus in particular on imperial stouts, uh, but, uh, but dark beers in general, things that travel a bit better than, than the hoppy side of things. Uh, We've been pushing out a little bit into Slovakia this year. Uh, we actually we had a, uh, thanks to a, a very good friend, uh, organized the uh, American Embassy Party for American Independence Day in Slovakia. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a very fun little event. And uh, so we're pushing a little bit into there. And then obviously uh, the Brussels thing is, is phenomenal for us. We've been meeting so many people already who are interested in the styles we're doing, who, uh, who like the beers, you know, who have sort of similar uh, similar views on, on brewing and all this, and it's, it's fantastic to make those connections. We're looking to uh, try to expand a bit of uh, distribution out to, to this side of Europe uh, over the next year or so. And yeah, beyond that, we, um, uh, we want to diversify. We want to be doing uh, interesting spirits projects, interesting food pairing stuff. We actually already have a, a pilot program going on uh, thanks to our taproom manager who's been just experimenting with fermented, uh, you know, acetic fermentation and all of this. And he's been making uh, beer balsamics uh, for the past year off of some of our stouts. And they've been phenomenal. They've been just, you know, there's so much character off of these things. Uh, so these sorts of projects are where we're probably going in the next uh, few years is, is trying to uh, just offer more avenues into the beer scene, you know, more, uh, yeah. Excellent. And thank <laughs> you so much for talking to the Beer Idiot. Thanks very much. <laughs>